Let's get one thing absolutely straight before we start here. A plant-based diet changed my life. I've since watched 220 of my vegan, slim and sustained students lose at least 20 pounds in 12 weeks working with me following this incredible approach to nutrition. So I'm the first to be an advocate for this approach. That said though, it doesn't mean it's infallible and it doesn't mean that those following a plant-based diet aren't gonna come across bad advice online and aren't gonna make lots of hiccups and mistakes themselves. So in this video, I'm gonna run through five of the most common plant-based diet mistakes I see and share exactly how to fix them. Let's get into it. Mistake number one, neglecting omega threes. Omega six is very easy to come by on a plant-based diet, but omega three less so. And what you ideally want is a decent ratio between the two. It's less about getting as much omega three and omega six as possible, and more so about having a suitable ratio between the two because of the role they play in dealing with inflammation. Omega three rich foods include the like of chia, hemp seeds, flax seeds, and here's a bonus one a lot of people don't realize and it always surprises people, Brussels sprouts are surprisingly high in omega-3s. Omega-6s, like I say, these are less so worried about because they're easy to come by. Walnuts, tofu, hemp and sunflower seeds, peanut butter, almonds, cashews, and so on. Very easy to get enough omega-6. As I say, the omega-3 is a little more tricky, so make sure you're focusing on the likes of chia, hemp, walnuts, flaxseed, Brussels sprouts every single day to ensure you're getting enough omega-3s. To take it one step further as well, I would also recommend you take a DHA or, e or excuse me, and EPA supplement made from algae oil to help with that, what is very inefficient conversion of ALA from those omega-3 rich plant foods. Mistake number two is being a fully fledged carbitarian. A lot of people will take the meat and dairy out of their diet and substitute in carbohydrate rich foods. So maybe they'll have more whole grain, maybe they'll have more legume, all of these foods that are high in carbohydrate. Now, don't get me wrong here, carbs are great and they're essential. And I'm the first to be an advocate of a high carb approach. At the same time though, let's also remember that they're one of three macronutrients, each of which plays a different, but still a crucial role in the body. I, like I say, I'm the first to call out carb phobia. I'll link a video down below where I dissect some of the common uh, myths, misconceptions today about carbohydrates. That said, as much as I'm warning people about carb phobia in pretty much every other video I produce here, I think having close to 80% of your calories coming from carbohydrate, as advised in the sort of old school 80-10-10 approach, if you're familiar with early vegan YouTube days, I think that's over the top. That's over the top in my opinion. Not because having 80% of your calories coming from carbohydrate will automatically make you fat, it won't, contrary to popular belief but rather because of what you're displacing from your diet by having that higher percentage of your calories coming from carbohydrate. Does that make sense? Fat and protein are essential too in their own different ways. So a recommended macro split, I think that's good for health and weight loss, generally speaking, of course there are exceptions, is still actually high carbohydrate, but around 60% of calories coming from carbohydrate, moderate protein and a low fat without being an ultra low fat diet. So a low fat plant-based diet, that seems to be uh, the correct formula in my opinion. Mistake number three, not staying hydrated. I know, I know, it's nothing profound, but don't be inclined to skip ahead just yet. Hear me out on this because this is important. Whilst this is a problem that of course goes across the diet spectrum, a lot of people dehydrated today. It isn't just related to plant-based eating. However, I think this does need to be, it does, excuse me, need to be specially emphasized when you have a high fiber diet. Whether you're plant-based or you're moving in that direction, regardless, if you have a high fiber diet, you need a little bit more water intake to push that fiber through your digestive system. It's gonna draw water from elsewhere to push the fiber through your digestive system, as it should do, right? You are designed to have a high fiber diet anyway, so this isn't a problem necessarily. But I do make the case that when you have a high fiber diet, you need to be even more conscious of, you know, dehydration. Mistake number four, not eating when you're out of the house or being afraid to eat just because you're outside of your own home. I get this, home's a controlled environment. You can have peace of mind that you're putting together a healthful and nutritious meal without all the hidden nasties, I understand this. But I think there is a tendency with lots of new plant-based eaters that they, th they think so Puritan about, in such a Puritan manner about this, everything has to be a whole food, even when they're on the go, even when they're out the house. There are exceptions to the rule. I agree with this mantra of focusing on the whole foods, but there are always exceptions to the rule. And I wanna give you a bit of a staunch 
uh, word of warning today about picking perfectionism over practicality. Because there are times where I will actually say to my clients, look, if you're in a pinch and you're in a restaurant and you know that you're not going to eat again, this is your last opportunity perhaps to eat for another five or six hours, and you've got two choices. You've got a very light salad, a healthy salad, but maybe a very light salad that won't necessarily fill you up or the option of just not eating anything because there's nothing that compliant on the menu, or a third option of something more processed. Let's say like a vegan burger. Let's say something like an Impossible or a Beyond Meat burger. I'll actually say to my clients, have the burger. You have my blessing to have the burger. Now, I know this sounds slightly contradictory as a health coach that pushes whole foods, but like I say, there are exceptions to the rule, and I would rather my clients feel full and satisfied eating the occasional meal that isn't quite so nutritious and isn't quite so healthful, than have a risk later on in the day of being so hungry because all they had was a measly salad or they didn't see anything on the menu that was particularly compliant in their view and so therefore they skipped a meal entirely. The potential consequences that come with that, the way you subcommunicate to yourself, the slippery slope that can ensue when you sort of start this sort of restriction and then you could fall back into the overcompensation sort of binge mentality. This is a far worse consequence in my view, than just having that more processed vegan option there and then. I want you to understand that this is not me endorsing junk food, that's quite obviously not my MO. But at the same time, I think there are occasions on which the cleanest option on the menu might not actually be the best one for you because it could leave you feeling underfueled, hungry, and therefore more likely to make a worse choice later on in the day. And lastly, mistake number five, thinking that a plant-based diet is going to be your magic pill. I've seen it do miraculous things. I get messages from my vegan slim and sustained students every day, I kid you not, saying, Ryan, I was able to get off statins. Ryan, my cholesterol has fallen through the floor. Ryan, I've lost 30 pounds on your program. I'm not saying this to be braggadocious. I'm standing on the shoulders of this incredible nutrition philosophy. It can do incredible things. You hear all these stories of people reversing major chronic disease with a plant-based diet. Wonderful. So maybe it will be your savior. But let me put it like this. If you're an emotional eater, if you binge eat right now, please do not think that a plant-based diet is going to save you by itself because it's not. And I think a lot of people with a poor relationship with food are particularly attracted to a plant-based diet because they hear messaging in this community that says, don't worry about cravings. You're binge eating, it'll go away because you can eat as much as you want. As long as it's a whole plant food, you can eat as much as you want. Not true, my friends. Very, very naive. In my stern and honest opinion, this is very, very naive. It's not gonna fix those things. It might help the fiber content, the self-limiting nature because of the nutrient profile of many of these foods. It might help keep cravings away. It might help lower the chance that you'll binge eat. But if you've got a poor relationship with food right now, plant-based diet's not gonna mask that. It will still rear its ugly head. If you think poorly around food, if you have inbuilt associations with poor foods and you've had those for decades and decades, Eating healthily is not by itself going to cure that. I make the argument that it will help, but it isn't gonna be, as I say, your magic pill. You're gonna need, sadly, to do that internal work also. Let's also think that, as an extension to this, nutrition is just one piece of the puzzle. What about rest? What about recovery? stress management, having a good social life. We spoke about hydration earlier on, of course, exercise. All of these things are gonna to contribute to your physical and mental health and well-being. Nutrition is a huge piece of the puzzle, don't get me wrong, but there's other boxes to check as well. And I'm encouraging you in this video to focus on those too. And that's it. Those are my top five mistakes that I see very commonly. Let me know which of these affects you most of all down below and any other ways that you think you're tripping yourself up with a plant-based diet right now. Look forward to hearing from you. Speak soon. If you found the information in this video helpful, but you need that next level of instruction, support, and accountability to number one, lose weight, number two, learn how to easily keep it off this time round, and number three, create healthy habits for life, click the link below. I'll tell you more about how I've helped over 300 men and women lose 10, 20, 30 or more pounds with simple plant-based meals without having to count or track their calories and with gentle exercise only. Click the link below this video.